Hi, this is Miss Jess from the Paquanic Library. And if you joined us last time we had our Lego challenge, we made mazes. So this time, our second Lego challenge, we're going to be making flowers. So we have little bags with our Legos in the children's department, and you can come and pick them up. And also we're gonna read a little story about flowers. So let me tilt this down a little bit so you can kind of see how we're doing it here. Hmm, let's see if I can get that better. Here we go. Okay, so you're gonna get a bag and you've got your little instructions there. And it also has the email for if you wanna send us how your cre creation came out. I got my Legos here. So there's actually a picture this time if you want to do it that way. So first I'm going to do it the way the picture shows. Looks like I've got this part here and then I put this part on top. See those, the green? So it looks like kind of like the stem and little flowers. And then everyone's gonna have different colored flowers. So just keep that in mind. The next one goes on top just like that. See that? And then before you put the next one on, it looks like I need to put the yellow for the center of the flower on next. And then you need to put some petals on. So I'm putting one on one side and one on my other side, just like that. And then the one on the top. Ta-da! Little flower. It kind of looks almost like um, like a flower from maybe Mario Brothers or something, right? <laughs> now I'm going to take it apart and see if I can make something else that kind of looks like a flower, but all by myself. Okay, so I'm going to do it this way instead. Let's see, can you see that? All right, this is going to be my little stem. And I'm going to put I'm going to put it just like that there. So that's going to be my stem in the center of the flower. And then maybe I will put the petals on like that. I'm just kind of doing this as I go. It's kind of like a test. And then like that. And then maybe, I don't know, like that? Does that kind of look like a little flower? <laughs> so that could be a flower too. There's lots of different ways you can make these little pieces into a flower or you can make them into something else. So I can't wait to see your flowers and now we're going to swap the camera around and want to read you a little story. Flowers are calling. This is a great book for spring. Flowers are calling a little black bear. No, not a bear. He doesn't care. They're calling a butterfly to dip from the air. Flowers are calling a wet green frog. No, not a frog. She likes her soggy bog. They're calling a bumblebee to look near their log. See the fuzzy bumblebee? It's super fuzzy, but I wouldn't touch it. Flowers are calling a porcupine. No, not a porcupine. She wouldn't take the time. They're calling a hummingbird to sip at their vine. Do you see the hummingbird? Her wings are flapping so fast you can't even see them. She's sipping some nectar from the flower. This is Queen Anne lace. Butterflies like a landing pad when they drink their nectar. And this is monk's hood. Bumblebees are hefty enough to push deep inside a monk's hood flower where the nectar is stored. And this is a trumpet honeysuckle. Hummingbirds use their long tongues. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought they used their little beaks. They use their long tongues to reach the nectar hidden in deep tubular flowers and hover as they drink. Look at that, we're learning stuff. Flowers are calling a loud blue jay. No, not a jay. He wouldn't stay. They're calling a honeybee to fly their way. Ooh, looks like buzz, 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 buzz. Flowers are calling a little mouse. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Flowers are calling a little moose. Well, a mouse wouldn't want them anyway. Flowers are calling a little moose. No, not a moose. What would be the use? They're calling a beetle to eat their pollen loose. You can see the beetle up there in the flowers. Flowers are calling a rabbit to stop. No, not a rabbit. It's not their habit to call a rabbit. He might grab it. They're calling a bee fly to visit their spot. A bee fly, hmm, I've never heard of that before. So here's that apple tree blossom. Honey bees help make many of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables we eat by pollinating fruit tree blossoms, such as the apple tree. There are thousands of varieties of wild bees that help to make many of the foods that we eat. Up here is the magnolia. Beetles have been visiting flowers for more than 100 million years. And then the violets. Bee flies look like bumblebees, but have two wings instead of four. Like hummingbirds, they are able to hover their furry bodies in the air as they drink the nectar. Oh, I didn't know that. Flowers are calling a small brown snake. No, not a snake for goodness sake. They're calling a pollen wasp with nectar to take. Flowers are calling a fat raccoon. No, not a raccoon. He doesn't care for white bloom or sweet perfume. They're calling a moth in the light of the moon. A moth. Flowers are calling a desert deer. No, not a deer. He can't even get near. He can't get near because the flowers are on a cactus. They're calling a nectar bat to flap over here. Oh, looks like the bat can get in there. So these are blowout beard tongue flowers. Pollen wasps, like bees, make loaves of nectar and pollen to feed to their young. Up here we have the Cardin cactus flower. Lesser long-nosed bats have long tongues. Oh, just like the um, humming bat, hummingbirds. That can reach the nectar deep inside the bell-shaped flowers of the cardin cactus. These cactus flowers unfurl for just one short night. And then we have the moonflower and Carolina sphinx moth. I didn't know that moths like flowers. Sphinx moths are expert flyers with very long tongues. Like cardin cactus, the blooms of moonflowers open for just one night and depend on the nighttime visits of moths for pollination. So these two flowers only open one time. So that's another thing I'm learning. This is fun. Flowers are calling a busy wren. No, not a wren. He's already seen them. They're calling some children to look again. The children. Look at a flower, what do you see? Flowers that have daytime visitors tend to have bright colors so that can be easily found among the green foliage. Flowers with nighttime visitors tend to have, tend to be pale with a very sweet smell, making them easier to locate in the dark. And many insects can't see the color red and are instead drawn to yellows and blues. Down here, many flowers use designs to help the pollinator find the nectar right away. These designs are called nectar guides. How is the middle of your flower different from its outer part? Would these differences find a pollinator, help a pollinator find nectar? Looks like they're different inside there. And the shape, the shape of a flower can tell you who might come to visit. Hummingbirds can reach deep inside long, thin flowers, but honeybees have rather short tongues. They need their nectar served in shallow golden bowls, like those of the apple blossom. Bumblebees are rather heavy and need strong flowers that can hold their heft. Is your flower a tight cluster of many small blossoms, such as Queen Anne's lace or dandelion? Then it will be good for all those insects that like a sturdy perch. Smell. Does your flower smell sweet or musky? Does it have a smell at all? Bees like sweet smells and beetles like fruity, spicy scents. Night active moths love flowers as fragrant as perfume. Nectar bats like musky smells and some flies like rotten smells. Birds and butterflies use their eyes to find flowers instead of their sense of smell. And then the time of opening. 
Does your flower open in the daytime or nighttime? If it is a night bloomer, it is, call, it is calling to a night moth or nectar bat. Day bloomers are calling to birds and insects who find food in the sunshine. The end. Oh, I learned a lot of stuff there. Flowers are calling. And don't forget, pick up your Lego challenge bag at the library while supplies last and then send us a picture of what you make. Hope to see you soon. Bye.